Once there was a woman, and every day this woman would take her baby down to the seashore. There she would cut the fresh green grass, and then she would go home. She would feed the fresh green grass to her cow, and then she would milk her cow. She would give her milk to the baby, and her baby would fall asleep almost in an instant, and the woman would hurry off to her work at the castle. So today the woman woke, and like every other day, she took her baby down to the seashore. There she cut the fresh green grass, and then she took the fresh green grass and her baby, and she went home. She fed the fresh green grass to her cow, and then she milked her cow. But today, when she tried to give the milk to her baby, her baby would not drink the milk. In fact, her baby started to cry. And this was very odd for this baby because this baby never, ever cried. Now, the woman really had to go to work or else she'd probably get fired. And she thought she had no other choice but to bring the baby along with her. When she arrived at the castle, she realized that she could not take the baby along with her on her daily chores. So she merely left the baby with her good friend, the chef. All throughout the day, the woman could hear the baby's howls in every corner of the castle. And when the master came home, well, he heard them too. What is making that wretched noise? I'm sorry, sir, that is my baby. You see, he wouldn't stop crying this morning, so I just had to bring him. Sorry. Well, get that baby out of here this instant. So the woman took her baby home, and she laid her baby on her kitchen table, and she rushed back to work. When she had finished her jobs for the day, she went down to apologize to the chef, for she had left a screaming baby with him. The woman was frantic. I'm so sorry, I don't know what happened. My baby never cries, you know what baby's crying. I'm, can you help me? I don't know, I'm so sorry. Out of the corner of her eye, she spotted a short creature, no taller than her knee. I know why your baby was crying. What? Who are you and why do you know why my baby was crying? Well, I am the Bruni and that, my lady, is not your baby. What do you mean? It's not my baby. Of course it's my baby. All right, well, that is a fairy's baby. Sorry, but it is. <laughs> no, fairies are like this big. This is like, this is like normal size. All right, well, don't you notice how it's got a red face and how its fingernails curl underneath its fingers and how it's kind of got a black beard? Well, you have got a point there, but still, I'm sure it's my baby. Okay, well, if I can't prove it to you, then when you go home, I want you to look in before you enter. And if you see anything unusual, tell me everything. Fine. So the woman went home, and she looked in through a window, and she saw nothing unusual, just her baby sleeping on the kitchen table just as she left him. Then up popped the devil himself off that table and dropped down onto the floor. He crawled over into the kitchen and opened the top drawer. He took out a fork and he took out a knife and he shoved it in his ears and he twisted and pulled it out and he put it back in the drawer. Then he opened the next drawer and he took out a pot and he took out a pan and he banged it on his head and he banged it on his head Ooh. and he put it back in the drawer. Now, the last drawer in this kitchen was filled with the woman's valuable things. Sure enough, that baby opened the bottom drawer, and he took out an old picture frame and gently stroked the frame and then smashed it on the ground. Then the baby picked up the woman's grandfather's rifle. Bang, 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 bang! Holes in the ceiling. Finally, the baby reached for an old bottle of whiskey that the woman had been saving for a very special occasion. 
and that baby chugged it. <laughs> and he smashed that on the ground. The woman sprinted back to the castle, not wanting to see anything else. And she told the Bruni everything she had just witnessed. Ah, I told you so. Come here, come here, come here. And he whispered in her ear what she had to do. So the woman went home that day, and she entered her house, and she picked up the baby, and she went down to the seashore. Today, she didn't feel like keeping this baby safe. Every day, the woman would lay her baby on a high rock where the water couldn't reach him. But today, she laid this baby on a low rock where the tide would surely swallow him whole. And then she cut her fresh green grass, and she cut, and she cut, and she cut. Out of the hill, thousands and thousands of fairies poured out and began to chant, We want our baby! We want our baby! What? Your baby? Well, this is my baby. No, it's not. That's our baby, and we want our baby. Well, what do you mean? All right, well, the Bruni, he told us that your baby is <laughs> boring. They told, he told us that our baby is fantastic and, like, way more fun, so we want our baby. Come on, give it to us. Well, if this is your baby, then who has my baby? We do. And they all went back into the hill, and they hauled out her beautiful human baby. Now the tide had risen, and the woman waded down into the water and picked up the drenched fairy baby and said, You really want this back? Hey, of course we do, of course we do. She chucked that baby at the fairies and grabbed her own baby. She picked up the fresh green grass, and she watched the fairies all go back into the hill, and she walked home. Then she fed her cow the fresh green grass, and she milked her cow. When she gave the milk to her baby, her baby drank it and fell fast asleep. And having a very eventful day, the woman thought she ought to do the same. But before doing so, she laid out a small bowl of cream as a thank you for the bruni, and then she went off to sleep. The next morning, when the woman woke, her whole house was spotless. And as for the bowl of cream, there was a small note left in its place. Thanks for the bowl of cream, signed the Bruni. P.S. I really, really do hope you got your baby back. The end. Yeah.